Welcome back to Missing. I am Tim, here today alone in the intro, but don't worry, Lance Reinsteerna joins us in the conversation, as does Jennifer Amell. And today we're speaking about the disappearance of Linda Ann House, who went missing in November of 1985 in Dallas, Texas. And she's classified as endangered missing. She's a white female who would be 65 years old today, but she was 29 years old at the time of her disappearance. She's 5'9", 160. And if you have any information, please call the Dallas police at 214-671-4316. And this case came into us by way of private investigations for the missing. Of course, that's the nonprofit that Lance and I are on the board of. And you can check out what they're up to by following their social media pages. There are links in the show notes, but you can also check out investigationsforthemissing.org. Okay, everybody, thanks a lot for listening. Please share and follow us on social media at Missing CSM. Thank you. Welcome back to the podcast, Jennifer Amell. How are you today? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me back on Missing. Absolutely. This show would be nothing without Jennifer Amell and her opinions that she brings to the table and her insight. So it's a delight to have you back. And unfortunately, all we talk about are missing persons. So this one that we have today is just as tragic as the last one that we spoke about. Um, Are you ready for it today? Yes, I am. I'm super ready to discuss this case. This one came into private investigations for the missing, uh, but was screened out due to, you know, a variety of reasons, which I can't really get into here. But all of our researchers are super busy with other cases. So I took uh, this case myself and tried to find as much as I could that's publicly available out there. Unfortunately, there's just not much. It's a it's an old case. It's from 1985. Um, and while we do know a lot about Linda's life, like we don't know much about her disappearance. And I want to deviate real quick and we can get back on it. You said that the researchers are really busy, the ones that work with private investigations for the missing. So you took this one on. I want to turn this into a call for people who are interested in volunteering their time to work with private investigations for the missing. We always need researchers to look into these missing person cases and work with you, Jen, to organize the research material that is all compiled that we work off of when we do these episodes. So it's a incredibly important element to the nonprofit and how the gears sort of come together to bring you episodes. Yeah, absolutely. I would welcome anybody who would want to come in and do research for us on a volunteer basis, especially if you have like skills in that area, even if you haven't held a job per se, like in research, if you are particularly adept at like scouring the internet for information, please write to me. We need your help. Yeah. And Linda Ann House has been missing since November 8th, 1985 from Dallas, Texas. She's classified as endangered and she's a white woman. She was born October 1st, 1956. So she'd be about 65 today. She was 29 when she went missing though. 5'9", 160 pounds. She was wearing a violet and white checkered maternity shirt and pants. And she was eight months pregnant at the time of her disappearance. Right off the bat, we get a nice bit of a tragic, a nice tragic element to this. She's eight months pregnant at the time of her disappearance. Blonde hair, green eyes. She has gold caps on her back teeth. Her maiden name is Williams. So Linda Ann House Williams. And she was raised in Shreveport, Louisiana, which is right on the border to Texas. And she attended the Southwood High School from 1971 to 1974. And Linda met Charlie Harrell in Shreveport, Louisiana. And they were married on December 13th, 1973, before Linda even graduated high school. Yeah, I think that was potentially a little bit more common in the 70s to like get married while you're still in high school. It's kind of... A little bit unheard of today, but I didn't really blink an eye at that 
fact. I mean, she and Charlie, I think, were around the same age. And it seemed like Charlie had um, enlisted in the Navy as well. So maybe it was like, I'm shipping off, you know. Um, maybe he was a little bit older, like had already graduated. And he's like, you know, I, I, I want to marry you before I go off into the Navy. That is actually a good point. So in 1973, that would have made her 17, 16 years old? Yeah, about 17, I think. 17 years old. And you have to think about like the time frame. Uh, 1973 was still like the Vietnam War was still on everybody's was was still a thing and I can't imagine being shipped off as like a young man like that so yeah it's a good point and Linda's son Charles Harrell was born on the 8th of December in 1974 so about a full year after Linda and Charlie were married uh so so she wasn't pregnant at the time I guess and uh, he went by the name Chuck but unfortunately passed away a few years ago yeah, um, I only found out that information because uh, Linda's other son, Chris, had made a family Facebook page uh, for, to raise awareness for his mother's case. And actually her ex-husband, Charlie Harrell or Harrell, had posted in there, you know, he'll never give up the search, he'll never get up, give up the fight um, in his son's honor, you know, and... Uh, for Linda's other son, which was not his biological son, but I imagine they, you know, were in each other's orbit because, I mean, his half-brother, you know, was related, of course. I'm not sure what Chuck passed away from. I visited his Facebook page. Um, there's nothing really on there. I couldn't find an obituary, but he was unfortunately pretty young. He passed before his time. And before this gets confusing, I want to clear up all the Charles and the Chuck. So she marries a Charles. Mm -hmm. Who goes by Charlie. Who goes by Charlie. She has a son, Charles, who went by Chuck, who's now passed. And then she divorces Charlie in late September of 1978. And she meets and marries another Charles. So this is Charles House, where her last name, her uh, current last name is derived from. Right, exactly. Yeah, lots of Charleses. So there's ex-husband Charles, there is son Charles, and there is second husband Charles. And her son Christopher. Right. Okay, so Charles House and Linda have a son Christopher. Yes, and Charles okay. worked um, as a bookbinder at this printing company in Dallas, and they had their son, Christopher. Um, but I think a few years later, uh, in, it seems in September of 1983, they also got a divorce. And according to census records, it appears that Linda was living on Winthrop Drive in Dallas, Texas, which was a cute three-bedroom, single-family home. Yeah, I'm looking at the picture of it right now from Google Maps. I'm not sure if it looked similarly back in the 80s. Um, but it seems to have like a nice little yard in front of it. Um, a black picket fence, not a white picket fence. It doesn't seem to be like in a rough area of Dallas, like like you wouldn't be in danger the moment you walked out your door. Um, but, you know, who knows? And I got to really hand it to Linda and anybody who's confident enough to get two divorces during that time. Yeah, it wasn't as common, right? No. No. And she probably had people telling her, listen, this doesn't look good on the first divorce, let alone the second divorce. But if it's not working, it's not working. So get out, make sure that everybody is uh, amicable in the decision and move on with your life, which it seems like she was making attempts to do because she started dating a James Watkins, Jim, and she ended up getting pregnant by him in uh, April of 1985. Yeah. So this, this guy is interesting. Um, I haven't been able to find a whole lot about him, but apparently Jim Walk Watkins was an attorney in Dallas. I'm not sure if their relationship was public at this point. It seems like James may have been in another relationship, if not married. I don't really know what the situation was with that, but um, shortly after you know, getting together with him, she becomes pregnant, um, which can lead to some conflict, I can imagine. Now, I did 
find something interesting on A. James Watkins, who's an attorney in Dallas. I'm not sure if it's the same one, so apologies if this is incorrect. But it seems like this man, this James Watkins, was disbarred in the state of Georgia. Um, not for any criminal neglect or action, but because he, quote, had multiple derelictions related to his deficient representation and abandonment of two unrelated clients. Um, so I don't know what was going on in this James's life, but if it is the same person, it kind of speaks to maybe something that was going on in his life, that he was distracted, that he potentially had an addiction problem, you know, nothing, you can't really speculate on why he would, um, leave his clients, you know, hanging. But, um, I don't know. I thought that was interesting if it is the same person. Was that the James Watkins that you found that was married and had a family? Yes. Yes. Again, not totally sure if it's the same person. Okay. So potentially not the same person, maybe a common name, but if it is the same person, uh, quite interesting and uh, probably a motive for um, for what we're talking about. Yeah, totally. Especially when you get into, you know, the circumstances of her disappearance. And by November of 1985, Linda was about eight months pregnant with what would be her third child. And there's very little detail about the day of Linda's disappearance. But on November 8th, Linda went to her boyfriend, Jim Watkins' house, to discuss their unborn child. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how we have this information. I know her son had spoken about this and posted about it on Facebook that they do know that she was on her way to Jim Watkins' house. I'm not sure who she told um, if she had been in conversation with her mother or father or, you know, um, or even Chris himself, although he was quite young. He was only five. Um, her other son, Chuck, was 10 at the time. So maybe it's per Chuck. Like maybe he would have known where she was headed. But I can't imagine that her young children would know, would would understand that she was going to talk about the financial support of this new child. That seems like a very grown-up conversation to have, have with your own young child. But maybe her family was aware that this was going on. And in November, how far along was she? She was about eight months pregnant. So this is the child that she was eight months pregnant with when she disappeared. Right, exactly. This is Jim Watkins' child. I need to just verbalize how fascinating it is at this point. From Chris's perspective... He might very well have a sibling out there. Yeah, we do know that um, Linda was pregnant with a girl. You'd think like if you were looking for a lost sibling, maybe Chris has done this, like submitted his DNA to see if there's like any kind of uh, match on one of those sites. But if he hasn't, like that, that is a good place to start for sure to see if like she actually gave birth to this baby girl. And we'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. Thanks to our sponsors, and now we're back to the program. However, apparently she was never heard from again after she was on her way to Jim Watkins' house. So do we know from Jim if she ever arrived? I don't think Jim has ever given a public statement about this disappearance. We'll get into his reaction to the investigation. Um, But I just want to make it apparent that Linda had gone to Jim's house for a specific reason. Um, she was going to talk about financial support for this baby. And I mean, I don't want to like speculate too, too hard on what the situation was between the two of them. But judging by the fact that like she was eight months pregnant, like a month away, a month or two away from giving birth, like the fact that this had not been figured out yet, that, she had not had this conversation with Jim or that it was at all in question about how an attorney, you know, he's not struggling, you know, how, an, how this guy is going to support his child speaks to the fact that there's probably um, tension there and that potentially it was an unwanted pregnancy. Yeah. I don't think that really is too much speculation outside the realm of reality. It feels like that is pretty close to the scenario that was probably going down at the time. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, and I wonder if this was the same Jim Watkins as the 
lawyer who had the family was this Jim Watkins's family house that Linda was going to. And if so, you could see how that would uh, pose some real problems for Jim, who was probably trying to keep the relationship secret. Absolutely. Yeah. If this was an affair, like, I mean, that's definitely a motive right there. I also don't want uh, Jim Watkins to be confused with the QAnon guy. Different guy. Uh, right. Okay. So this Jim Watkins was a lawyer. You found a lawyer through your research that could be the same one mm -hmm. that was disbarred, but it might not be. And this is definitely not the QAnon Jim Watkins. <laughs> Correct. That we know of. I can't even say definitely. Yeah, right. And according to a post that Chris made, Linda's car was found abandoned a few months later. And it was apparently found in a parking lot that Linda and Jim had met in before. And when you say a post, this is a Facebook post that Chris is putting out to the public. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I mean, these. this is like one of very sparse details we have. I'm not sure where this parking lot is located. I don't know what kind of car Linda was driving. But it does seem interesting to me that she and Jim would have met in a parking lot before. Like, that speaks to something maybe clandestine about their relationship. Again, not totally sure, but, like, why would you meet in a parking lot rather than one another's home? I think we know. What's it a parking lot for? I mean... Right. Are we taking it as literally this is where they met, or they've just met in this parking lot and and had... This was a parking lot that they went to previously on occasion. Yeah, they had been known to meet in this parking lot. I see. I don't know for what reason. Maybe Jim lived far away and it was a halfway point. I mean. A lot of possibilities there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the car? Was that processed forensically? So I can't say for sure if it was forensically processed. Um, Chris, Linda's son, did say that the car was never swabbed for DNA. But keep in mind, this is like the mid 80s. Um, and maybe they didn't have that technology. Um, it was relatively new at the time. So they may have gotten fingerprints or hair follicles and stuff from the car. But um, I'm just not sure what they have in evidence. But there is no DNA that we know of. And when questioned by Dallas police about Linda's disappearance, her boyfriend Jim first denied knowing her and then requested a lawyer when approached a second time. He definitely knew her, right? We just have Linda's word that that was the father of her child. I don't know why she would lie. I mean, <sighs> Jim, Jim probably was well off because he was an attorney. I mean... It's definitely happened before that men have been extorted uh, for child support who, who aren't the fi the biological fathers of the child. Um, but I'm, I don't know, based on what I know of Linda and what Chris has posted, it doesn't seem like that was like she was out for money, like she was a gold digger or whatever. Um, so I don't know why she would make up the fact that she knew this person and that he was the father of her unborn child. To me, this reads... Like, it was a clandestine relationship uh, that Jim didn't want anybody to know about. And so when police came to him, maybe he had his family or another relationship in mind or his, you know, career and reputation. He just, like, flat out denied knowing her. And that's an easy one to get caught in a lie with and then come clean about because you could just say, well, I, yes, okay, yes, I know her, but I was trying to keep this hidden. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I mean, it's, he's definitely lying. <laughs> I think either it's a lie to cover up the fact that he had this relationship that he didn't want to know about or a lie to cover up the fact that he had something to do with her disappearance. I don't really know. Do we know what kind of law he practiced? If it's the same James Watkins that I found, then I think it was criminal. Like he might have been in defense. So he would have some knowledge on how to react and how to protect himself in the event that he is approached by law enforcement. Oh, totally. I think um, a lot of innocent people who get kind of swept up in the criminal justice system just like don't have knowledge of the legal process and don't know their rights. But this guy, Jim, was an attorney himself. And so he probably knew exactly what to do in a situation like this. He knew not to say anything to the police, innocent or guilty, not to say anything to police without an attorney present. But 
in my humble opinion, like that, like that fact is not suspicious to me. Like you should protect yourself. If you're talking to police, you should have an attorney present. But the fact that he denied knowing Linda at all is like strange to me. And Linda's officially declared deceased, correct? The Social Security Application and Claims Index has declared her as deceased. Yeah, so I found a record um, of this in the database that you just said, Lance. Um, I'm not sure who reported. Like, I know you have to, in a missing persons case, if no body is found, you have to, like, wait a certain amount of time before a person is allowed to be declared dead. So we don't have a date of when Linda was declared deceased or by whom, but they listed the date of her death as the date of her disappearance, November 8th, 1985. So initially I read that and I was like, wait a second, did they find her? Like there's record of her death, but I think it was just that she had been missing for a while. And that was the only, that was the last date that somebody saw her alive. Yeah, I'm kind of curious about that as well. And like, would would someone have had to have claimed that she was deceased? Or if it just like, I don't, I don't think it just automatically, you know, declares a death, no matter how cold the case is. I think you have mm-hmm. to file specifically. It's interesting because she wasn't married at the time she had divorced her first and second husband by the time of her disappearance. So it's not like she had a husband who was like trying to claim social security benefits. Um, maybe it could have been done on the kid's behalf, like so they right. could collect from their mother's estate. But um, yeah, not really sure. Yeah. That's what I would think was that Linda's parents probably did it for the kid's sake. Yeah. That makes sense. That's, that's legitimate. And where is this investigation at currently? It's pretty much stalled. I know Chris has a lot to say about the lack of investigation in this case. I mean, he didn't go into specifics about what the police kind of bungled, um, but he did say that if this had happened today, if an eight-months pregnant woman went missing, there would be like a huge uproar and, you know, so much media and, you know, all the law enforcement resources poured into the investigation That just wasn't the case in Linda's disappearance. But if she was murdered or otherwise met an untimely death near the time of her disappearance, she probably still would have been pregnant. And while that's like horrible to imagine, it definitely narrows down um, Jane Doe's that you might find. Um, Unless it's like skeletal remains and there's no, you know, fetus with the remains it might be difficult to tell but as as far as my research went um on the namus database there was only one person who met the criteria interesting do tell i will preface this by the fact that um linda's dna is on file um because chris had gone in and submitted his dna so this Jane Doe may have been ruled out already. It wasn't listed as an exclusion on NamUs for Linda's profile, um, but it would be a pretty easy kind of look-see to see if the DNA matches. Um, so this case, I mean, it's a Jane Doe, so we don't have a name. Um, the number is 86-00407. There's no Jane Doe's that were found with like an almost a term fetus, but there's uh, a woman's body that was found with the following description. And this is like some medical jargon, so we'll try to parse it. But um, there was, quote, hyperpigmentation of nipple areolar and lower abdominal linea nigra, suggestive of a pregnancy within the past year. And in parentheses, it says, could have been pregnant at time of death. Now, this Jane Doe was found... In 1986, March 25th, 1986, in Hamlin, New York. So quite a ways away from Texas, but obviously not impossible. Yeah, for sure. Um, I believe her remains were found washed up on the shoreline of Lake Ontario. What condition uh, was the body in? Yeah, I mean, this is pretty gruesome, so skip ahead. (laughs) <laughs> 15, 30 seconds if you don't want to hear it. But unfortunately, this Jane Doe was found without her head. 
Um, at least one limb was missing and at least one hand was missing. So somebody took great pains to obscure this woman's identity. I mean, that's textbook, like how you're going to get rid of a body and not have it be identified is take it over state lines and remove the head, remove the hands. So no fingerprints, no opportunity to look at dental records, gold caps, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it seems like someone with a working knowledge of what gets someone convicted uh, would probably have been the perpetrator in that case, whether that's organized crime or someone in the legal field. Yeah, right, exactly. And at this time, like, again, we'll say DNA wasn't really in the, you know, collective knowledge about crime. I mean, maybe an attorney would be, uh, I don't know, hip to this new DNA technology. Um, but... Because we have it now, I wonder if DNA was collected from that woman's remains. I know, like, we've we've dealt with a few Jane Doe cases, and um, I'm thinking of suitcase Jane Doe, and that was 95, and the police never, <laughs> never kept her remains. They cremated the remains. So I don't know what the uh, process was in New York at the time, but hopefully they have something on file for this Jane Doe. And there's an interesting note about a small piece of red fabric that was found several yards from where they found the body. Yeah, that was the only note. Um, not sure what that has to do with anything. Maybe it was clothing that she was wearing. Um, if that's true, if it was from her clothing, then we know that doesn't match what Linda was last seen wearing, per se. But yeah, it's, it's a almost literal red herring. And we'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. Thanks to our sponsors, and now we're back to the program. And according to police, Linda's DNA and dental are available, but again, Chris says he submitted his own DNA profile to run against the National Cadaver Lab, but no matches were found. And that's pretty much where the investigation stops, I guess, and there have been no leads since. And Chris, I guess, says that the police really aren't trying anymore to find a pregnant woman who went missing and it would have been handled much differently today. Like you said, Jen, he was saying if this was something that happened today, they would put together task forces to make sure that this person was located. And Linda's ex-boyfriend, Jim Watkins is deceased sadly. And uh, he was apparently the only suspect in Linda house's disappearance. Um, so this information that Jim Watkin, Watkins is deceased has come to me secondhand. Again, I wasn't able to find exactly the person we're talking about via like a background check. Uh, I didn't find any obituary for this James Watkins, but I trust the secondhand source who told me that. And I think that's why police and the investigation is sort of at an impasse because he was the main suspect, and now he's not around to answer any questions. And though Chris never gave up hope of finding answers in his mother's disappearance, he reinvigorated interest in the case by creating a Facebook page called Justice for Linda House. Mm -hmm. And because he is um, bringing attention to this case, he also started a GoFundMe, which we'll give the information for at the end of this episode and in the show notes. But because he raised some money, the family was able to hire a private investigator as of October 2020. I am not sure if this investigator is still on the case, but if they are, I mean, that's wonderful news. I hope they they uh, get a catch a break soon. And one of these pictures that he's posted is especially heartbreaking because it shows him as a five-year-old little boy and his mom, Linda, and then they seem to be uh, captured in this fun like moment where she's sitting in a chair outside and leaning back and looks like they're you know having a real close uh, moment between the two of them and he writes on the uh, caption to this photo this photo really hits home not only because it is my mom and me but because that is possibly one of the last pictures we had taken together I think about how much I remember as I was only five. I like to think not a lot, but then I look at my five-year-old 
and how much he knows. What would happen if I just disappeared? Would he remember? Would he fight to find answers knowing that he could run out of leads? Would he remember ice cream after t-ball games? Would he remember going to watch football games with me? Would he look? And then he goes on to say, well, I am. I'm going to fight until we have an answer. So really powerful, moving, heart-wrenching caption and really the perfect thing to say under this picture. Yeah, absolutely. And in that original post on the Facebook page, he had coupled this picture you described, Lance, with a picture of Chris himself and his five-year-old son. So he's, I mean, it's, it must be really heart-wrenching for him to have a son the same age he was when his mother went missing. I mean, no wonder it's on his mind and he's doing all this work at this juncture in his life to, to find answers. So sad. And good for him because you couldn't get an answer out of me if you were to ask if I have memories of being five years old. And any memory I have, the earliest would probably be around that time. So his earliest memories in his life are about his mom right before she disappeared. And Chris wrote another post on October 1st, 2020, in celebration of what would have been Linda's 64th birthday. He wrote, Happy birthday, Mom, wherever you are. Dallas Police Department, I hope you have changed your policies and do a better job of investigating other missing person cases. For those that don't know my mother, Linda Ann House went missing on November 8th, 1985, at the time she was eight months pregnant with her then-boyfriend's child. His name was James Jim Watkins. He worked for a place in Dallas called Watkins & Associates. I believe it was an architectural firm. The little that I have been told by authorities was that they have contacted Mr. Watkins and he first denied knowing her. The next time they approached him, he directed them to talk to his attorney. To our family's knowledge, that is where it stopped. On that day, we didn't just lose a mother, a daughter, a sister, or a friend, but we also lost my soon-to-be sister. A few years back, I went to speak with the Department of Public Safety as they have this case now. They took my DNA to run in the National Cadaver Lab, but nothing matched. They said that their cold case department will look into it. After calling them multiple times, their response was, no new leads. Well, of course, there wouldn't be any new leads until you go out and find them. I think enough is enough, and I will start my own investigation into finding out what happened. If anyone knows of an organization that helps in these type of cases, please PM me. If anyone knows anyone in law enforcement that can be of any assistance, please PM me. Feel free to share. Hashtag justice for Linda House. Keep in mind that this post was done before he made contact with his own private investigator later that month in October, perhaps because of this post. And it was a year and a half before he contacted private investigations for the missing Um, So hopefully he's found the resources he needs um, to get the investigation going again. And it's really important to keep Linda's name out there, Uh, keep raising awareness. If it wasn't James who had something to do with her disappearance and it was somebody else, hopefully um, justice will be served. And you mentioned the GoFundMe that was started, Justice for Linda House. So you can go to GoFundMe.com and search Linda House and you'll find their page there. They also have their Facebook page, Justice for Linda House. And of course, if you have any information on the disappearance of Linda House, you are instructed to contact the Missing Persons Clearinghouse at the Texas Department of Public Safety, 512-424-5074. Or you can contact Detective L. Garza at the Dallas Police Department, 214-671-4316. And Linda's case number is 616689-S. Or you can even submit a tip to private investigations for the missing at piftmtips at gmail.com. Or you can call 866-331-6660. And you can remain anonymous.